Okay, so let me pull up the slides and we are going to get started. Um, as you guys know, I am a business strategist working primarily with women entrepreneurs who want to scale their business um, with multiple income streams. And here's the deal, you guys, is that you know, the number one reason I hear from people that they are not ready to scale is because they are too busy and they don't have time. And ironically, you know, that is really one of the things that we want to be careful about. Um, we want to just make sure that you're not getting stuck in that trap where you are, you know, where you are like working on busy work and not working on scaling and growth work. And I'm saying this, if you are someone who wants to scale and grow your business, if you want to have more of an impact, um, while still having time for your personal life too, right? While still having time to travel, as many of you guys know, I was just in Mexico for two weeks, um, working and traveling, you know, so I really took the opportunity because my business is scaled to go leave the country. I did work to keep my business running. Um, and I had a lot of time to go to the beach, go to the pool, walk around the city, right? I was in Playa del Carmen, which I love. I don't know if any of you have ever been there, but I'm going to be honest. If you have, it's, it's truly, um, one of my most favorite, favorite cities. So can you guys let me know, are you like seeing the screen? I'm having like just really slow computer issues on my side. Um, so we might have to wing it a little bit. <laughs> we might, you guys might be seeing the title slide the whole time while I go through the other slides, but basically cause they're not, uh, advancing on my screen. So what you're going to find out today, you guys is how um how to the number one time waster that you probably don't even know is happening to you why this one way you're supporting your clients is actually hurting your business not helping your business and the task that my clients hate that kills their productivity and it's so funny you guys because i work with higher level entrepreneurs entrepreneurs who want to take their business from fifty thousand to a hundred thousand or entrepreneurs who are at a hundred thousand and want to take it to two hundred fifty thousand dollars you know and it doesn't matter where you're at in your business this task is something that is when my clients really get into cleaning up their schedule and focusing on you know having more time for your fun stuff and having you know focus Focusing on the activities that matter, this this one thing is the number one time dream, time dream that they all identify. So one of the reasons I wanted to go into this is we talk about productivity a lot, right? Productivity is a popular buzzword, and people start trying to become more productive. Um, they start adding in things like morning routines. They start adding in scheduling and things like that. But what they don't do is they don't take stock of what is wasting their time and remove those things first. So they're sort of like piling in new things into an already shaky foundation or broken system. Has that ever happened to you? Have you had that experience, right? Where you've tried productivity strategies, um, like morning routines or, um, breaks or pomodoros and it's just like not working because honestly you're still wasting lots of time in your business and you have all these things that you're doing so we are going to get into the top time five time wasters in your business right and this is applicable once again it doesn't matter where you are in your business right now it does not matter where you are um it is more it is just really more important um, that you fix this at any level. So if you're more at an earlier stage in your business, you know, good for you because you could fix this sooner. <laughs> it might be a little easier to start implementing some of these things now. If you're further along, totally fine. This is still important for you to go through. You might have access to more resources or you know, to be able to fix these things, but we're going to go through that. So here's the deal. Client management, um, who here has clients that they manage and they've realized that it's taking a lot of time. And I know you're probably thinking, but Nicole, like clients are 
are the source of my income. I have to take care of them. I have to manage them. I have to, you know, spend time on those things. And I get that, but cause you know, I have clients, I love my clients. Um, but I see you guys, you know, you guys are focusing on the wrong piece of client management, right? You're, you're setting certain tasks up to take a lot of time that shouldn't be taking up a lot of time in terms of client management. And the things that I'm talking about are contracts, um, scheduling and invoicing, right? And this is, these are the initial stages of on client of clients, right? And you don't have a good system set up. So this is like client onboarding and things like that. And it will continue in, right? Because you're maybe you have no, um, no, like, process, right? So when do clients get what? Like, do you have your contracts all set up? Are they in a system so that you can send them? Do they get the link to the schedule? How does invoicing work? I can't tell you how many, um, how many business owners I talk to who are years into their business that are still spending hours each month with invoicing, right? Chasing down payments, chasing down late payments. And it's because you don't have an automatic, um, billing system set up, right? So I have to tell you guys, like, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to waste time on unimportant tasks. So since the beginning of my business, I have had automatic billing, meaning that, you know, I've had my like clients, um, when I used to have an in-person practice, clients signed off on billing and processes, and I just had to charge their card. Um, yes, it took like a minute for me to do, but like, there was no chasing down bills. There was no waiting for payments. There was none of that. Right now I just, just have um, an, you know, a payment system that goes out where clients payment is charged every month on the same date. And you know what? That saves my clients time too. As a client, I don't want to be having to pay an invoice every month. It wastes my time. Charge me automatically. I'm agreeing to that. You know, I have no problem with it. So same thing with scheduling. People go back and forth with scheduling. Um, you know, I send my clients the schedule to my monthly schedule at the start of the month and have them book in all their sessions for the month. This is so much easier. There's no talk or discussion of um, like when sessions are available, when sessions are happening, we, I don't have to manually do anything. They get reminders. It's so easy, right? And people go back and forth on these things. This can easily eat away at your precious time. So what is the solution? You guys, the solution is a client management system. Um, you know, there are systems that do this. I personally use 17 hats, but I know a lot of you, um, are in other businesses and you can, if you are in a business, there are lots of systems to you that have HIPAA compliance. I actually spoke to someone from healthy last week. This is for, um, health professionals, right? Like dietitians, um, doctors, things like that. He told me all kinds of people are using, he said even other coaches, life coaches, career coaches, um, people like that are using it. Um, simple practice is one that a lot of my clients who are therapists use. These are all there. They do the work for you. You will have a little bit of time to set it up, but then after that, your processes are so much easier. Everything is managed in one place. You don't have to go looking all over in different folders, different documents, things like that. Everything is one place, nice and easy. Um, there's apps that go along with it. Your clients have access to stuff. It makes it really easy to manage your clients. You can literally save hours hours each week, each month, every time you sign on a new client, if you have one of these systems set up. If you're interested on getting more information in these systems, you guys just send me a quick email to Nicole at NicoleLeBoy.com and I can um, give you the direct links to them. I didn't want to overwhelm this with that. Okay. The next piece, right? Who here feels that email takes up a lot of your time? If you feel that email takes up a lot of your time, I want you to drop it in the comments below. Um, because I don't know anyone in any business that is not struggling with email management, that is not losing hours each week to their inbox. Um, and this is because there are bad email processes, meaning you are checking email all day, every day. You think it's just a minute. You're responding to emails at all times. I have to tell you guys, this has definitely been at times one of the biggest time killers in my business. And it's made me, you know, truthfully at times dislike my business. And it's not because of anything anybody else is doing, but because of my choice on how I managed it. Meaning that I'm responding to emails very quickly, left and right, worried. I was worried people would get mad at me if I didn't respond to emails quickly. Meanwhile, 
well. I never expect anyone to get back to my email immediately. And truthfully, I'm not, you know, dealing with life or death issues. So there is no reason when my clients, I have to tell you guys, when my clients track their time, a lot of my clients who are scaling up, right. To six figure, multiple, six figure, multiple income stream businesses, we do time tracking and it's scary to do, right? Because it's, it's really, um, nerve wracking to say like, what am I really doing when you say you're busy all the time? And then you have to really put down in writing what you're doing. You start to see, oh shit, like these are things that, that shouldn't take up so much time. People are spending hours in email every week, right? Every day I should say, which is multiple hours every week. And here's the thing that's happening. They're responding to emails quickly. They can't remember what they responded to. This is what happened to me, right? Um, junk mail is popping up all the time. And you know, you're responding to one email here or there and you're multitasking and you're interrupting your other activities to do it. So you're interrupting your lead generation activities. You're interrupting your marketing, right? And what you just really need is a couple of time blocks a day. What is the solution? You guys, the solution is scheduled and mindful email time, right? Being intentional about your email. Also just making sure that like, make sure that in your, um, for those of you who have clients, and things like that, make sure that your clients know you're most likely not going to get back to them right away. So even for me, I, I let clients know it may take me up to 48 business hours um, for an email response. Truthfully, it doesn't usually, but it is good to have the space. Like yesterday I was traveling. Um, I didn't have to make a big deal of it. You know, I could just travel. I didn't have to worry about, I need to be on my email all day. And thank God, because truthfully, I thought I'd get work done on my flight. And I unfortunately was seated next to a child who had a very difficult flight and he was grabbing everything. So I honestly couldn't even take out my computer to work because he would have been grabbing the computer to work, my computer. So I kind of just had to um, watch a movie and relax, which was good. But, you know, you need to have scheduled and mindful email time. So for those of you who are on, I would love to know in the comments, um, who is actually scheduling email time, who is doing blocked checks of email time. Now, listen, for those of you, um, who are also scheduling just to keep track of who you need to respond to things like that. I use a follow-up spreadsheet to keep track of, you know, any outreach I'm doing, any pitching, any things like that. Um, you could also use a tool like boomerang for Gmail, which allows you to schedule emails out and also allows you to add a boomerang. So it comes back into your inbox. If you don't get a response within a couple of days, this is helpful, right? Because it means you don't need to constantly be thinking like, who is I supposed to be following up with that drains your time that drains your energy. Um, but also make sure too, you have an autoresponder to your business email. So like for my, um, support email, I don't, I can't be checking that all the time. Right. And I have a team that can help me, but they're not there all the time. So we have a nice support email that goes out. That's like, Hey, it's going to take us 48 hours to respond. That takes the pressure off. We're preparing people for that. Right. So those are ways to start cutting back on the hours that email management is draining your business. And I talk to my clients in email, right? Like my clients, my higher level clients get unlimited email access to me. So I have to have good systems set up. I have to make sure that I don't feel I need to be looking at my email 24 hours a day, right? The other thing, um, this is a huge one. Who does personal errands during their work time? <laughs> now I'm saying this because I think that one of the things about being an entrepreneur is it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I'm a business owner. I'm so glad I'm an entrepreneur because that means that I can start my own schedule. I can create my own schedule, right? Who joined, who wanted to become an entrepreneur so that they can set their own schedule? Um, this is something for sure that you know, was my reason for being an entrepreneur. And I remember in the beginning, I got such like a high feeling. I got like such excitement about being able to go to the grocery store during the week, right? And, and things like that. Here's the thing, personal errands, personal responsibilities can be eating up your time, right? And it, it you really almost don't notice it. And I remember um, early on, when I was doing business coaching, one of my clients was like struggling. She wanted more clients. She wanted more clients, but she was so busy. She was so overwhelmed. And I was like, I'm confused though. Cause you're saying you want, you know, say five more clients. Where is your five hours in the week for that? Like that should be your marketing time right now. <coughs> 
And it turned out that she was going to the post office. She was going to the bank. She, um, personal errands, right? Some borderline work errands, right? She was doing things like that in the middle of the day when it was slower in New York City. I get that. That is okay. But if you're like using that during work time, you need to make sure you have other scheduled work time in, right? Especially depending whatever you're working on or where you're at in your business. So these things can really eat up time. And luckily nowadays, there are ways to get cut back on that. For example, one thing that I first invested in and outsourced as a business owner was my house cleaning. (laughs) I love a clean home. I don't want to clean. I love a clean home. I actually got it cleaned while I was away so I could come back to a spotless house. Um, It made it so much easier to unpack, to do things like that. So I realized that outsourcing cleaning once a month, a deep clean meant that I could easily save five hours, four hours, five hours a week, um, you know, from cleaning, right? If you outsource cleaning once or twice a month, um, I just needed to do touch ups. I'm a slow cleaner. I don't like it. It's torturous. It makes me feel tired. That was cutting into work out time that I can be doing work or time that I could be doing things socially with friends and family. So, one, make sure you are outsourcing personal tasks, right? And you're, you're doing them outside of your work hours. Now, I'm not saying you have to work all night, but I'm saying, you know, if you have something, if you have a day full of doctor's appointments or doctor's appointments, you know, don't stress out, like just know in advance, you're going to lose work time that week. So plan a little bit less, lighten up your appointments or, you know, put in the excess time somewhere else to make, make, um, make up for it and just be aware of that. The other things you guys can do are things like grocery delivery, things like that, right? That are just grocery pickup. There are lots of very low cost. Um, I know a lot of people are using Instacart, um, Postable. There are, you can even honestly hire like a sort of, um, you could hire someone. Um, I had someone doing some errands here for me. It was like so cheap and it saved me so much time because I could be working on income generating activities for my business that are going to pay off a lot more and bring in more of an ROI, right? Than some of the other stuff. Hey, everybody. I see there's a lot of new people on. Say hello in the comments. Um, we are talking about the five ways to, um, to actually, uh, the five things I should say that are wasting time in your business. Um, and we have covered email management, personal errands and, um, client management, client onboarding and things like that. Okay. So number two, right. Um, this is a huge one who feels like they need to constantly be researching things. They need to be constantly in learning mode, right? Um, how much time are you spending on that? And are you tracking it? And are you putting in time for learning mode, right? My clients, um, who once again are really successfully doubling and tripling their income in a short amount of time, my mastermind clients, my one-to-one clients, they are, cutting back on these areas, right? Like they are not, they are not staying stuck in research and learning mode anymore. And a lot of times that's why they actually come to me, right? Because they're like, I'm tired. I'm tired. I just need help. I need to um, stop looking up things to do. I need to stop taking courses. I just need someone who's going to work with me to give me personalized strategy for my business. And this is important, right? You cannot be researching and learning all the time. You need to be acting and implementing. Um, And number one, uh, the number one thing we're going to talk about actually goes hand in hand with this. Uh, but this is, these are things, honestly, you guys, that once again, we cannot waste time on you guys are busy. That's why I'm doing these workshops. These are, you know, these are quick workshops every week for you, right? I want to give you the best things. I'm telling you how to implement them, right? I'm not giving you vague, vague content or education. I'm giving you very specific strategies, right? But you guys need to watch, right? Cut back on the courses you're buying, cut back on the courses you're taking that you're not ready for or not ready to implement on, Um, invest in higher level help, honestly, Um, or just start to notice how many blogs are you reading? These things blog you down. Uh, These things bog you down. These things suck up your time. You don't even realize it, right? Um, 
So for you guys who are on, I want to know what the biggest time waster is in your business. Drop it in the comments. Um, for those of you who if are, and I'd love to know, you know, is it one of the things we talked about so far or is it something else? Um, so once again, how can you overcome research learning mode? Cut back on the educational pieces, limit what you're reading, limit what you're learning, really find out, do you need another certification? Um, do you have enough stuff? You know, what are you doing that, that is making you go into research mode? When you get recommendations, look at them. Don't fall down the spiral rabbit hole, right? Like just for example, you guys, I told you guys that one of the best things to save time in your business is a client management system cuts back on the back and forth, makes you more professional. Um, the costs are usually really, really low. I think, honestly, I signed up for 17 hats forever ago, so I have very low pricing. But I think it's like $20 a month, right? $20 a month, that's going to save you how many hours of going back and forth with clients. Seriously, like that is a good investment, right? So when people give you recommendations, don't go down the rabbit hole of like, let me look at 20 other client management systems and compare all of them and test all of them out. You know what I mean? Like look at, limit what you're looking at and then make a decision to get one and try it out, right? Don't get stuck in like, I can't decide. This is why, honestly, I'm very specific with my clients in the strategies. I take away a lot of that over, you know, research mode, learning mode, stress, so that they could move forward on the things that matter and not get distracted by these other things and shiny object syndrome. So once again, manage your calendar properly. Notice the time that you're spending on learning. Put it in, right? Maybe have um, a block of time, a, like every week, where you go through like the blogs and emails and things that like that that you want to read. Um, you know, and I know I'm saying this as I'm saying like, hey, come to my free workshops. But not everybody is giving actual advice like I have, right? Make sure that you're really like assessing the the, the things that you're getting from people, and if it's stuff you should still be attending. Um, okay. Number one, overthinking who identifies as being an overthinker, who identifies about worrying and staying stuck in fear mode and really over assessing things. And it really goes back into research learning mode, right? You guys, um, because research learning mode give, makes you overthink things, right? And you can overthink things. You can kind of find evidence for your need to overthink things by staying stuck in research learning mode. So these things really go hand in hand, but this is more about the time where you're not ma actively making decisions for your business. You're not being intentional for your business. You're um, overthinking things, right? Like, like, investing in a client management system or, um, you know, investing in, in, um, you know, um, maybe like fixing your website or something, right. Or whatever, like you're overthinking these things. You're letting them take up too much time of your energy and even worse, like you're stressing yourself out so much. This is what I see a lot, right. Happen to a lot of us entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs in particularly, they get themselves so stressed out with the overthinking that when they make the decision, it is so pressure filled, right. That then they don't even ask on it. And they kind of forgot they made that decision to do something. Like maybe they say like, um, um, I'm going to pitch someone or I'm going to reach out to this person. They don't do it. And then they totally black out, forget, right? And this is especially common for people who've had maybe like a trauma or an anxiety in their life. And they just kind of can very easily get into that highly anxious mode. And I know this because I, this has happened to me myself, right? Um, so once again, you're spending hours thinking about things instead of actually taking action and implementing, you know, you're spending hours and then it leads into that research learning mode. So once again, I'd love to hear from you guys, um, as we've gone through going through these, which ones really resonate with you, um, and which ones you connect with the most, what are you going to, which one are you going to work on cutting back on? Right. And for overthinking mode, I'm going to be honest, you guys, strategy and support is the way to go. I literally have been in business for six years now. And the smartest thing I ever did was hire support before I started my business. Um, my first business, which was a local private practice. And the reason I say that is because I knew that I would be on the couch Googling how to start a business forever. Right. Um, and I, I just, honestly, I wanted results quickly. I needed to get an income generating business quickly. That's also why I've scaled my business more quickly than a lot of people who started at the same time as me. If they are stuck in overthinking mode, they haven't invested in the right strategy and support. Right. They, they, 
they feel they need to do it on their own. They, they bootstrap things and that can really hold you back. So if you're interested, honestly, in talking about either like one-to-one -one support or my mastermind, just book a call with me. I would love to hop on a call with you or send me a quick um, email at Nicole at NicoleLaloy.com. Um, so we can kind of just chat and see if it's a right fit for you, if I could recommend something that else that is a good fit for you. Because honestly, you guys, like this is really, 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 really important. Um, it is absolutely necessary that you are able to kind of, you know, move forward on things and not overthink and get support. And I've, like I said, I started my business six years ago. I hired a coach before I've taken breaks from coaching and my productivity, um, my growth slows down during those breaks because I'm just, I overthink everything. I cannot make decisions for myself. I mean, granted, thank God I can do it for my clients, right? But when it comes to yourself and your stuff, and you may be thinking, but I help people through these things all the time. But, you know, when it comes to yourself, it's hard to really make decisions and stick to it. And sometimes you need that accountability too. So strategy support and accountability are absolutely necessary um, to be able to move forward with your, with your business and stop wasting time. And then you can now do some of the more, some of the strategies around productivity, right? Um, so what I'm really excited to tell you guys is that I have a brand new five day challenge. We are getting started March 25th. Um, and as you guys know, I've done challenges before. I had almost a thousand signups for my challenges last year. Uh, and you know, I want to help you scale your business. I want to help you become more profitable. I want to help you become, you know, be able to help more people. And I want to see you get more visible. I want to see you have thousands of people in your community following you, participating in things. Um, I want to see you constantly have, you know, not have to waste time on, on so much more marketing because you have a steady stream of clients, right? And here's the thing. A lot of the times you are too busy working in your business to work on your business and you are still in employee mode, right? And you can't be in employee mode 24 seven. You have to spend time on boss activities. So I am going to be sharing the strategies that I use with my high level clients to help them really, once again, double, triple their income. One of my clients used these strategies. She got organized um, and she actually 10 X her income, 10 X in income stream. When we worked together, she went from $500 a month to $6,000 a month over like six months. So this is really, these are strategies that work, right? These are strategies that work and will allow you to have a diverse income, right? This is a free challenge, by the way, you guys. So just head on over to NicoleLaloy.com slash breakthrough busy to sign up. This, there will be worksheets. Um, there will be videos. There will be live Q and a sessions. It's really a lot of fun. Like I said, my clients who, um, use these strategies are going to get great results. And I have heard from hundreds of the people who did the challenges last year about the results that they've gotten and they are still using these strategies. These are high level strategies. These are paid strategies that my clients are, are applying. So once again, if you are like want to get unstuck, if you are tired of telling people how busy you are and not really seeing the income results that pay off for it. And you know, sometimes you guys busy is a self-sabotage, right? Like we stay busy with certain areas so that we don't have to do the things that scare us. But what that means is that you are not getting out of your comfort zone and you're not going to get the results you want in your business. Right. And I've seen this, um, with many of my clients who, who get busy with other things, right? Non-important things, right? Like the personal errands or the checking emails. And as a result, they are not putting themselves into the new situations that they need to scale their income. And when we cut back on that, right? We really see. Um, one of my clients recently, she has been having amazing growth because she really saw all the stuff. Like she really was like not aware of it. She's just working constantly in her business. And she finally, um, we through time tracking, we really looked at everything she was doing. There was just so much wasted time. And what was what it was meaning was that things that she thought were profitable in her business were not profitable, right? So she thought that she had certain income streams that were making her money and they weren't because there was so much extra time involved on the back end to manage those income streams that she's now cutting them out, right? And now she's making more money doing less work. And this is like, honestly, I get so excited when I see things like that. Um, like she was just spending a lot of time driving to and from clients, right? And, and she was saying, well, I'm on the phone during that. But it's like one, you shouldn't be talking on your phone when you're driving. And two, like, Think about that separate time, right? 
like that is eating up your time. That means that you're not getting paid for that time. So we really had to work through and remove some of these things. And now this means that once again, she's getting more money for her, um, for her hours of work. Meaning, so say before she was averaging, she thought she was getting paid um, like $150 for an hour of work, but it turned out that when you averaged it out, it was really like $30 an hour of work. Like that is not okay. So now we've cut back on, on these things and she is doing work that really is like $150 an hour, right? So think about what that is gonna do for her bottom line and how she's going to, she feels so much freer now. Like she's just like literally like, been emailing me about how happy she is and how she didn't realize that was happening. So once again, you are really going to be able to be part of this challenge um, and to really get support like that because I, it is so important to me. Like I'm just tired of seeing, you know, so many business owners not really treat themselves as business owners, right? And not really achieve the potential that they want. And we are ambitious people. We are highly motivated people. And as a result, we overwork ourselves in bad areas sometimes, right? And not the right areas is what I mean by bad, meaning not helpful, draining, you know, things like that, right? So once again, um, join the Breakthrough Busy Challenge. We are going to get you organized, unstuck, and making money with multiple income streams. Um, so I think that this is something that is going to be, you know, really powerful, really helpful. Um, and I appreciate you guys coming on and joining me with the freaking tech issues at the start and right after me getting back <laughs> from Mexico literally yesterday. Um, but in the meantime, you guys make sure you send me an email on Nicole at NicoleLaloy.com if you want more information on any of those tools that we discussed. And you know, if you are interested in learning um, more about these strategies, just join Nicole, join the five day challenge, NicoleLaloy.com slash breakthrough busy. All right, everyone, if you have any questions, you can drop them below. Otherwise, we are going to wrap up. I'm just gonna go through the five, um, five biggest time wasters in your business real quick, but drop your questions in the comments. If you're watching the replay, drop your questions too. Client management, right? Like taking care of clients, onboarding them, things like that. Email management, um, checking those emails, responding quickly, um, not blocking the time off, responding whenever you get an email, checking an email whenever you get the notification, Ugh, things like that. Biggest, that is, by the way, you guys, that is the one that I was talking about that is the biggest time waster for my clients and they are literally shocked by it because it's happening so automatically. It's like a robot, right? Personal errands, yes. We're talking about things that waste your business time and that is personal errands um, because it's just like, it can you know overtake your time if you're not careful with it. So outsource some of that stuff, um, utilize those tools, utilize the, the things that can get those things done. So you have more time for, once again, income generating activities. Research learning mode, right? This is when you overlearn. This is when you take a million free courses. Um, this is when you research everything instead of just taking action. Um, this is really eating up hours of your business and delaying your growth. And then the last one, overthinking. Um, so once again, if, if you are ready to to get high, next level strategies to overcome this so you can actually scale your business with multiple income streams, then go to nicolelloy.com slash breakthrough busy and join us for the challenge. All right, everyone, have a great day. I will talk to you soon.